So Abel, a really exciting time for Airspan as a company. Earlier this year, you began the process of merging with the SPAC New Beginnings Acquisition Corporation. So big picture, what does this suggest for the future of Airspan in terms of product and market expansion? What's at the top of uh, what I assume is a long list of, of priorities that you all are working on internally there? Yeah, I mean, this is this is great news for us. Uh, we are extremely excited about going public. I mean, for us, going public is the is the logical next step to support our growth and also to expand our resources to achieve our mission of providing customers with uh, groundbreaking five G networks and also, you know, to widespread uh, the open run adoption. We are also, uh, you know, uh, the, the reason of being public also is because of this additional cash, right, that we are going to use to accelerate uh, Espen's 5G revenue growth and also penetration of the of the growing uh, 5G market. And, and also, uh, we want to also expand our team to do so. So again, becoming public is going to help us to, to achieve these, these main two priorities. And also, we believe that being public will attract and retain talent which is also one of our main objectives from uh, for for Aspen, uh, you know, hiring new software uh, engineers mostly. Yeah, I'd like to talk a little bit more about that talent piece. There's a, a lot of discussion in the the telecoms industry about how the skill sets associated with cloud native five G are very very different from what we've seen in the past, and this is beyond just hardware software development, but it's right down to deploying, managing, operating, and optimizing the network. So it really runs the gamut. So as the industry goes through this transition to cloud native 5G and Airspan invests in growth, what kind of people with what kind of skills will you need to be successful? Yeah, I mean, at Desmond, we believe we believe that the company value is that is their employees, right? Uh, run it, run, R&D is, is, is one of our core, uh, you know, departments at Espen, uh, you know, we, we, we have an, an, uh, a best of breed R&D team in the industry. Uh, it's a global team, uh, experts producing uh, innovative and, and, and disruptive solutions. Uh, you know, that's why we, we have been capable to, to ship more than 1 million radios around the world to more than a thousand customers in, in over a hundred countries. And also we have several awards recognitions. Just to give you some numbers, we are around 800 employees nowadays. 60% of them are R&D employees, and the majority are software, right? The rest are, 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 are hardware. And, and software has always been there at Aspen, right? Even previous generations, for example, at 4G, software was one of our key values. We were very successful creating this simplicity on deployment, this plug and play functionality, right? We are, uh, we are now in our 18th uh, release of software generation, and on the radio side, we are on the fifth generation of, of hardware. But when you look at Open RAN now, uh, you know, moving the, the, the software from, from proprietary hardware to, you know, to, uh, to IT servers, now the software is much more visible, right? And also the software now needs new skill sets, as you were mentioning. Some of these uh, skill sets, of course, is related to virtualization, cloud native software, of course, containers, Kubernetes. So, <clears throat> What we see on 5G and what we get from our software engineers is that you know 5G technology based on open run is it offers many many challenges that you know software engineers wants to tackle. So Abel, if you look three to five years down the road, what do you see as the the biggest opportunities for Airspan? And at the same time, what challenges do you foresee having to navigate to to really capture and address those op opportunities? Well. I would say that these are super exciting three to five years ahead of us. I mean, we like to define this as a, as a super cycle opportunity. <clears throat> so we define super cycle as first, we have a new generation, right? So we have 5G, a new generation of, of cellular technology, together with a new disrupting architecture, open run, right? This disrupting the way that uh, networks were, were deployed. Then we have a uh, you know, dedicated spectrum that we discussed, you know, opening these private networks and also this CBRS market. And together with the CBRS market, we see these, you know, new players, these uh, cable operators becoming virtual MNOs using CBRS as a, as a type of neutral host operator. Uh, we also have, you know, governments supporting and funding uh, R&D and open run uh, use cases projects for 5G. And, and also we have these, these 
you know, the situation with many countries uh, banning uh, Chinese vendors, right? It also, you know, supports the, the open run technology because it offers more security thanks to the open and transparent uh, interfaces that you can really validate what is the level of security you have and also where your data is stored. Besides, we, there is another market opportunity that we haven't discussed so much that is fixed wireless access, right? All these point-to-point, -point, point to multi point uh, type of, of connectivity that we also support with our uh, Mimosa line of products. And this has been also very, very valued now in, in COVID times, right? Where people need this, this connectivity. So, so yeah, very exciting times for us. Yeah, you described it as a super cycle and uh, there's a myriad uh, sort of investor and analyst reporting out there that looks at the value 5G is going to create over time. And I think the, the point for me, at least, is if you look over a 10 year horizon, the value 5G is going to drive into global commerce is something that you measure in the, the trillions of dollars, not in the billions of dollars. So I'm just kind of curious to hear from you and you alluded to this, but Bottom line for me, if I'm an investor, why should I be adding Airspan to my portfolio? First of all, uh, I mean, we, we have the experience to, to be successful in this, in this business. We have been 20 years in this business, uh, you know, providing uh, revenue growth uh, constantly. So <clears throat> we, we have the capability of a scale uh, in our products, hardware and software. We have demonstrated this already with, uh, with Rakuten, with uh, tens of thousands of, of ready deploys, but in our, in our bell, we have you know, 1 million cells deployed. Also, we have nice financial figures. We are projecting a growth revenue of, of 47% uh, for 2020, and also a CAGR of 35% from 2020 to 2023. And of course, this going public for us is the, is the push that we need in order to, to get these these cash proceeds in to, to invest further in our uh, product for, uh, portfolio and also in our in our extend our uh, in our employees in order to to tackle all this great funnel that that we see in the in the market in this 5G super cycle. Well, it's really exciting to hear all the uh, opportunities ahead for Airspan Abel. So thank you for taking the time to uh, outline that for us. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be here.